I want to share two things uh, before we begin and go into giving people the opportunity to have a direct dialogue Q&A with the family of consciousness that I call Seth. Um, for many of you who are already familiar with the consciousness called Abraham, it is a group collective whereby the group consciousness contributes to the thoughts and the responses and the queries, yet there is one in the group who speaks for the group, and the, the group collective of Seth is a almost a identical then collective of consciousness, where there are several beings that form the consciousness um, and contribute to the consciousness, but there is one that speaks for the group. And so that is the group that I will be channeling today. And that I'm happy to channel um, regularly. The two things I wanted to share, uh, the, the first thing is a much lighter conversation than the second thing. So I'm going to offer that to you first. Uh, many of you already are familiar with my journey. So I would like to give you kind of a brief update. Recently, several weeks ago, I attended a sound bath, my first one ever, my first entree into experiencing the bathing of my body in an energy frequency or energy frequencies, I should say. And I experienced halfway through half of my skull uh, began to feel almost an electricity. And I don't want to use electricity in the way that it would feel if we actually touched it. It was, um, think of a humming that became very strong, but only in the right side of my head. And I, I paid attention to it only insofar that I was curious about it and understood that nothing wrong was happening and allowed it. And so it continued until the conclusion of the sound bath. And I asked the other participants if they had experienced anything unusual in their bodies. At the end of this, when we have our discussion, I would be interested in hearing from anyone who has attended sound baths and experienced um, physical sensations in their bodies. The day after that first sound bath, <clears throat> It was innocuous. I was at a friend's birthday dinner and I began to hear as clearly as you are hearing me enunciate and articulate words to you. I began to hear the term that we call it as clairaudient, but the first time it happens, it's, it's nothing that you have to gather from your intuition. It's not an emotion that you have to lean into. It's you're eating your burger and someone else is talking and you can hear that. And it was a little startling. It's a little startling, but, but interesting. Later on that night, I went to uh, the friend's house to get my car because I had ridden with my friend to that birthday dinner. And I was immediately going to go home and my friend had asked me to stay. She wanted me to meet her boyfriend uh, because he was up from Delaware. And so I did. I waited outside um, thinking that the interlude wouldn't last for very long and I would go home. And whereupon I heard her yelling my name from her backyard. Uh, at this point of the day, it's starting to get dark. And I can't, you can't see in the distance. So I ran to the backyard and immediately noticed two things. There was a man laying on the ground face down and there was a gas trimmer laying 15 feet away, still running. So I first went to the trimmer and I turned it off and then I came back to my friend and, and said, what's happening? And of course, she's very upset. She's very hysterical. He is non-responsive. It is almost 100 degrees, even as the sun is going down. It was a very hot day in August. And um, she is not present in the moment. Um, now, I learned enough to understand at this point <clears throat> that we all are in intersections every day in the exact moments and places where we are supposed to be. We are experiencing exactly what we 
what we agreed to experience, what we wanted to experience. And so I was able to remember that, that as I was looking at him laying on the ground to remember that I wanted to be here for some reason that was unknown to me, but this is clearly something I agreed on. So in that moment, having just become clear audience the night before, I heard the voice again say that you need to call 911 right now. And so I tried to get her attention and told her, you need to call 911 right now. And she ignored me because she was, you know, very emotional, very upset. So I said it again. And she continued to be upset and try to communicate with him and be non-responsive to me. And I said it again. And then I realized that, and the voice kept telling me that I could hear the words as clearly as you can hear me now, you need to call 911. The voice was getting firmer and was getting stronger. And I did something, I've known her since high school. I did something I've never done before. I raised my voice at her in a very unpleasant way. And that snapped her attention and she shifted her gaze to me. And I said very uh, strongly is the word I will use that she needed to call 911 right now. So she insisted that we carry him somehow back into the house, somehow we did. And en route to the back door, because it was very hot outside, and so I acquiesced. En route to the back door, he attempted to speak. And when he attempted to speak, the words came out in a garbled fashion that was the exact same fashion that my own father attempted to speak after his stroke. And I haven't heard that level of communication since before my father transitioned. And when I heard those words said in the exact same way, I shut my eyes, even as I was dragging him up the stairs of the deck, to get to the sliding door into the air conditioning so that finally we would call 911. Because the memory of those words punctured uh, my emotions. And in that moment, the voice spoke again and said, it's a stroke. And only you know what a stroke sounds like here in this moment. And then I understood why I came. So we get him in, we call the EMTs, the paramedics arrive, the police are there, and they are looking at his pupils, and they have pulled him into a wheelchair, and they're saying, oh, his pupils are dilated, did he take any medication, did he take anything that would be drug-like? And the answer was no, he was having a wonderful night with her mother, waiting for her to return from the birthday dinner, and they kept looking at that reason. And although they gave him Narcom, thinking that it was a drug, some sort of illegal substance that he had taken, the Narcom didn't work. And instead of understanding that they were mistaken, they gave him the Narcom again, and it still didn't work. And I had said to them at this point three times, he had a heart attack last month, and the pupils being dilated is not the only diagnosis that causes that symptom. And of course, they disregarded me because I'm not a medical person. And they eventually ultimately took him off in the ambulance whereupon my friend looked at me and says, well, that is my boyfriend. Whereupon she communicated that she was very upset that she would not continue the relationship if he had imbibed in illegal narcotics. Whereupon I told her it was not narcotics. He did not do anything wrong. This was a legitimate stroke of some kind, right? And I insisted that that was true. And she insisted that the belief in what the EMTs were saying, in what she could see and hear and experience with her five senses. So she eventually went to the hospital and I went home. I think, you know, just trying to absorb everything that happened. Five days later, um, I get a phone call that on my phone and I see that it's my friend and I answer the phone and I said, hey, you know, how are you? 
And it was not her, it was the boyfriend. Whereupon he said some humorous joke and I laughed and I was grateful to hear his voice that it was healthy and hearty. And I was, I told him so. And if, um, and whereupon he said, you know, I, I, I was told everything that happened and I want to thank you for saving my life. The point of this is twofold, although it's the simpler story. I encourage everybody to utilize this new um, avenue of modality in their awakening journeys. If you are uncomfortable being in person at a sound bath, to find them on Zoom, turn the volume all the way up and allow your, your body to be exposed to the frequencies and the gift of the movement of your body in harmony with your alignment. The second thing I wanted to share with you is that there is a great awareness right now um, in the world with everything that's going on. Um, there are a lot of conversations. I'm aware of the main points and I'm gonna share with you that I am aware of the main points only because I have friends who are able to stay more connected with the ins and outs of world events and um, world opinions on many subjects. Um, I rely on those friends and I welcome those friends to share that information with me because I do not watch the news. I haven't watched the news in years. And there are many that think that not watching the news means that I stand in a position of being a very uninformed person. I am proffering this information because I've been on a journey in the last year and a half to make the strength of my view of you more accurate than it has ever been. I want the ability, I have been wanting the ability, and I have been able to achieve the ability of seeing each one of you when I see your face, to see you as who you really are. You're a light being that has come forward in the physical body, a representation of a portion of the one consciousness, as we all are, which is why we are not only really all in this unifying experience, physical experience together, but we really are each other because we come from the same source. We are each a portion of that source, having this experience, remembering itself through our unique lives that we have planned and, and live for ourselves here. And so I wanted to embark on a journey in the last year where I could see you as me, where I understood that I was you and you were me. And in order to be able to do that, because I do have human eyes, I do have five senses in my physical reality, just like you do, I had to train myself on how to see you first. And the way that I did that was I eliminated all voices, as many as I could, that described each of us in a separate fashion as female and male, woman and man, child and adult, Jew and Christian, Asian, Caucasian, Black, Brown, Spanish, Muslim. I had to disconnect myself from the labels that separate us. Uh, awakened, sleeping, Republican, Democrat, independent, Green Party. I had to move myself away from the words that separate us so that I could come more into training my brain and my thoughts into seeing all of us as one to see you as who you are. You are me and I am you and you are each other. And we are in this one consciousness together. And so I wanted to share that because a lot of times you're gonna find yourselves in conversations of right and wrong, of good and bad, and conversations of judgment. And again, all of these are words that cause a separation. They're words that cause your brain and your attention to focus 
on a concept and on an idea. And whereas you have the choice, as we all do, to make the decision of what we're going to focus on and what we're going to think about and what we're going to have our energies translate into our realities every moment of our day. Many of you already know. You are most powerful in your present moment. This now moment is when you are most powerful for whatever you are focusing on is what you are creating, what you are experiencing. I'm suggesting and sharing my experience to help those understand along their awakening journeys. Some have been on their journeys much longer than I have. And yet we are all the teachers and we are all always students as well. I'm sharing my experience so that you understand that when you are engaged in conversations that are using labels of separation from each other, that there is a decision that you can make, which is a decision of love to understand that because you are them and they are you, the first thing you can always extend to each other is understanding that they are living an experience and a journey that they have selected, which is serving them immensely, even though it is a journey that you would never have contemplated or even desired. But they do, and they are, and they are moving using those experiences to have their own unique levels of awakening as they progress, and that is okay. So the idea then that we are all a part of this one consciousness, that we are all striving to reassimilate ourselves back into unity consciousness through our individual physical lives and experiences is a decision of our ability to exercise our free will in every moment of our lives. The, the ability to accept or reject ideas, the ability to determine what you like and what you don't like, the ability to express that and decide how you're going to express that, which of course is your ability to express yourself into your world, um, is the most unconditional realization then of your ability to exercise the unconditional free will that has been shared with you by all that is, by the universe, by the one consciousness that most of us recognize. And so, although I could have gone into the story about how I started channeling or how I did any other things, I wanted to give you my, my information on my most recent journeys in the hopes that in some way it would serve you, it would offer you some assistance in your ability to move away from words and ideas of separation and more into the flow of unity, which is the abode of love, which is where we can naturally feel love for each other, even as strangers. When I say strangers, I mean that in the physical sense. Seth likes to talk about um, framework one and framework two, the physical reality and the non-physical reality, where he has explained that before something can be experienced in your physical world, it has already happened in a non-physical plane or dimension. And that in that dimension, not only did it occur, but all of the players that were involved in its occurrence have already agreed to do so. So what does that mean? Everyone on this call in this moment, we all know each other already. We've all already agreed to be here in this moment to share this time together for our own individual purposes and for our own reasons. And we all agreed on this in non-physical. And when the agreement was struck and it had all been played out and the nuances were worked out, it manifested into our physical reality. And so I wanna say, remember then, 
because of this process of creating your life, your physical life, because everything that you experience already occurs in what we think of as a non-physical dimension or plane of existence. We all know each other already. We don't recognize each other in the physical, but our souls know each other. We know exactly who we are. We know exactly what we are. And I would welcome you to remember that as you move along your days for every day, to train yourself to see each other as yourself, to understand that even when you're looking at someone that looks very different than you, has a different culture or um, a different political party or a different religion or a different language or a different age, that that person is you and you are them. And that if you can find your own path, your own awakening journey to your ability to reorient your energy back into oneness. And I say back because that's where we came from. And we are moving back to the origin of our, our source platform to remember to move back into oneness, that you have free will that is so sacred and so inviolate and so unconditionally shared that you literally can do anything you want. You're the miracle makers, we're all the miracle makers, but you can only believe that everyone is a miracle maker if you first believe it about yourself, because again, they are you and you are them. So remember as you go about your day to try to be conscious. And why is that important? Because each one of us is contributing to the collective conscious. Yes, then each one of us is contributing our energy, our thoughts, our love, our lack, our fear. And so our goal, which is why we're all here together, why each one of us already agreed to be here together, is to get our physicality in line and in harmony with our soul, our inner beings, so that we all, as we have agreed, we all said we would do, so that we all can contribute more love into the consciousness field and less fear. And so I wanna thank each of you. I know that I enjoyed reading with you and rendezvousing with you in the non-physical plane and dimension, agreeing that we would all play this part. And now here we are in the physical. And even though, on my particular device, I don't have the screen where I can see you all. I want to say thank you. I appreciate um, we all agreeing that I would play this role, that you would play your roles. And hopefully today we will all journey into a perspective and an energy field that will bring us all more into the understanding. Although I am the presenter today, understand that because I understand you are me and I am also you, I am also the student here in this forum. So I want to extend my appreciation and gratitude to each one of you as well. Thank you.